Larry Gross here, mountainstage.org is where you can hear the show, but it's not on your public radio station. And I hope you listen to this one because the lady right behind me here is one of our guests today. Her name is Lauren Pritchard, and here is her CD. It's called Wasted in Jackson, and that refers to Jackson, Tennessee, her hometown. Even though you're young, you've, you've done a lot of stuff. You started Jackson, Tennessee as mm -hmm. a girl. Yeah. Like most people, you wanted to get out of the small town. Yeah. And so first you went to Los Angeles? I did, yeah. And what, what was, happened there? I was 16. I had pestered my parents, I think, for a few years to the point where they just said, fine, we'll go. I had started songwriting and had, you know, done, spent a bit of time in Nashville, realized that wasn't really where I wanted to be, but had sort of made some connections in Nashville and decided to move to Los Angeles with my mom. It was a very interesting couple of years because Jackson is a very small town. You said you've been there and, and yeah. you know, you know, it's, it's sort of, it's like any small town. You go from only really being there to being dropped in a, in the, the center of the entertainment industry and especially the film industry and, um, yeah, both film records, TV, totally, the whole thing. It's an, it's like an, it's a complete alternate universe to the one that I knew. I'm watching in the madness and I think I need a roadmap. How did Lisa Marie Presley play into this? I'm reading her name in this Los Angeles picture. Tell us about that one. Um, Lisa's daughter Riley is one of my very best friends oh. and um, when I was 17, I had just turned 17, my, my younger brother had come out to visit my mom and I um, on his spring break just for the week. While he was there, he got into a very bad skating accident. So I went around saying goodbye to everybody because I didn't have any money. There wasn't really any other option. And um, Riley was one of my closest friends and you know, told her what had happened and said bye. And she said, you can't leave. You can just stay in the house with me. And you know, I, I was like, no, I can't do that because when you're really close friends with someone, especially when you're young, you're like, no, just stay with me and, yeah. you know, whatever. And I was like, I cannot do that. Yeah, sure. I can't just move into your house. Yeah, it sounds good, but it's not real. <laughs> it can't happen. And then a few days later, um, Lisa called my mom and said, she, she said, this can't is for leave. real. Yeah, like it's she real, really yeah. can stay. You know, they had a piano in their house. I spent a lot of time at their house and they, they knew that I was always working really hard on my music and trying to record demos and doing gigs and I was in the band and, you know, trying to make as many connections as possible and they were, you know, trying to be as supportive as possible as well. Lisa was going to do a tour and there was a period of time where she wanted me to play keyboards on the tour. They were very, very supportive of me and my music and me moving forward in the industry. And well, that was probably good for you then. Very good. The, their support was, you know, had they not taken me in, had they not given me a home, and also just the, the moral support that you need, they really are like a second family to me. So I was living with them, and I decided to go on an audition for Spring Awakening. I read So you the did script. that audition in Los Angeles? It was in Los Angeles. Right. And and so, and but then the show was in New York? Right. Yeah. I went on one audition. That was in... Um, it was, I think it was in either August of September or September of 2005. And then I didn't hear anything. And I went home for Thanksgiving. And while I was home over Thanksgiving, my agent called me and said, You're, can you go to New York for the final callbacks for this play? And I was like, why do I have to go to New York? Because <laughs> in, in nowhere, in all that time or anything that I had read about the, you know, what was going on, did it say that it was going to have to be in New York? Mm. So you never knew the play was originally intended to open in New York? I had no idea. So 
Uh, so I went. I mean, I went on this audition thinking this is a play in Los Angeles. Yeah. Okay. And it was a play in New York. So, but I thought, well, I have no money, and I don't have a job, and I really loved the music, and I was always a big fan of Duncan's. Yeah. And I really loved the story, and so I thought it's not going to hurt to go because sure. the worst that'll happen is they'll say no and I won't get it, or I will get it and I'll have a job. Yeah. So you got it. So you I did. did it for two I got years. It. Is that right? Two years. Yeah. Okay. So that's very successful, and that with the play was a big blockbuster. Very successful. Put you on the map. you go but I know that no pain killers make it go away I tried them once before it didn't work for me work and there's no pain killers make it go away if I tried to overdose it wouldn't bring no change oh, oh. And even when it's cold and even when I'm wagged, I won't want you back. The further I can go, the farther I can see. And I fight for that, but did you always know? Or did it come out of nowhere? Well, then, how did you get to England? Um, I was constantly writing and doing gigs whenever I could in New York for the whole time that I lived there. And in while my bio, while you're in, in the, the show. Right, while I'm in the show on the days off that I had or, you know, whatever. And in my bio in the Playbill, I, I had created a MySpace page. Duncan had helped me do some demos because he knew I was a songwriter. Everyone in the cast and the crew and yeah. the production knew what I really wanted to do. And Duncan helped me put some demos together so I could put them on a MySpace mm -hmm. so people could hear my songs. And it, I had that in the bio. It was like, thanks to my family, I'm actually a songwriter and a singer. <laughs> Go to my MySpace and check out my music. And um, a man called Danny Strick from Sony ATV Music Publishing came to see Spring Awakening with his wife and wanted to have a meeting with me. And so that led to a publishing deal with Sony ATV. There's a man called Egg White who I made this record with, mm -hmm. uh, co-produced and co-wrote Wasted in Jackson with. He lives and works in the United Kingdom and he has a family so he doesn't really travel. And he's a very sought after writer and producer. And so I made my first trip over to the UK in 2008, in September of 2008. And I was really nervous. I loved his writing and I loved what he had done before, so I really wanted the sessions to go well. And they did. And we wrote um, a song called No Way, which is on the mm -hmm. record, which is the first song we wrote. And so that was like a couple weeks that I was there. I went back to America and while I was back, I got a phone call from his management saying, we'd really love for you to come back. I said, okay. So I came back about three weeks later and we wrote Stuck and wasted in Jackson. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I don't see you like they see them and they only see saints or sinners, yeah. And everybody seems to think it's fun to be free, but you can't keep It's got a great feel. It's got a little bit of a soul R&B feel to it. I mean, I grew up. I grew up listening to a lot of soul music and a lot of a lot of folk music, music with a lot of feeling that was very honest writing, and that was the kind of record I wanted to make. It was definitely a singer-songwriter record. Screen door slamming on wood haven, laughing. We better take cover. Careful, we're gonna get caught in the rain if you don't hurry. I got. Somewhere, and 
And I've seen places in this book I borrowed from my uncle. Stick around, stick around. All I hear is stick around. But everybody's wasted. I don't want to waste in Jackson. Never gonna face it. No one wants a change in Jackson. But I'm wide awake now. Wasted in Jackson, which is a great song, by the way, that title song. Thank you. It's a good song and it's a fun song. And I noticed you said you don't wanna, you're not trying to diss anybody in Jackson. And you made the great point, which is it could have been anywhere. Ja Jackson is everybody's could. hometown. If you're a small town person, you, you wanna leave. Even yeah. a big town person wants to leave. I mean, I think the, the whole point and the, the, the sentiment of that song, it doesn't have anything to do with the actual town, but it does. It, it, but, but what it actually has to do with is everybody gets to a point in their life where you've been doing the same thing for so long. It bottles up and then it explodes and yeah. you've got to have some kind of a change. And that can relate to you at any point in your life. You could be 60 years old and have lived in the same place for 30, 40 years and it could be an amazing city and you just get tired and you sure. get you feel like you're stuck there. Now there's you nothing unique out. about that. I mean everybody <laughs> wants to, to get out, especially when you're young. You need to get out and find totally. yourself and, 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 and see who you are outside of the context of the way everybody sees mm -hmm. you. And that's what you've done, and you're doing a great job. Now, uh, do you have new things in mind? And I know you're still working this. You're in, in the we midst are. of this. We're in the midst of this. you already have new ideas? But we are. You know, I've just um, begun writing for the second album, which oh. is a really cool feeling. Um, last year was a really busy and crazy year. We spent a lot of time in the U.K. Mm -hmm. working this album a lot, and I didn't have any free time, really, yeah. to do it. We did over 175 gigs last year. Wow which was a lot of work. That's a lot of work. And when we weren't doing that, we were traveling, so our year was pretty much taken up yeah. by, by that, which was wonderful, you know. Is the new one gonna be with Egg also, or are you gonna go another direction, the, or do you know We yet? will spend a little bit of time with Egg, but um, the, the, it, the cool thing about playing the songs with a band more and more is you, you start to figure out who you are more and more in a live sense, in a personal way, as an artist, you know, as a writer what you really want out of things. So I definitely would like to make it uh, a bit more rock and a bit more I raw. See. Sort yeah. of maybe a more Janis Joplin-like okay. feel. Well, we'll see. Hope you come back when you make that one. I hope so. Thanks for being hope with you'll us. you'll have us back. Thanks, Larry. Lauren Pritchard is the name. Wasted in Jackson is the CD. Mountain Stage is the show.